Hello everyone, it's Elizabeth from The Smart Stitcher. In this week's tutorial we're all about sewing our mittens so we can create our finished pair that are going to look a little bit like this. So we take you through laying out your pattern, transferring the design onto the leather, cutting out and of course the most important thing, construction and then finishing of your mittens so that you can wear them with pride. I would always advise if you can making a mock-up to test your pattern and to fit your larger hand first if at all possible. Even if it means using um, something else but try and keep your best leather for your nice kind of mittens and then use your maybe an off cut to create your mock-up but it is really important to to check for fit if you possibly can so as you're looking at your sheepskin you want to have it so that as you put your hand into the glove it goes in smoothly if you feel that you've you'll know that you've got it the wrong way around because it will feel odd and it won't feel comfortable putting your hand in so if I just turn this round and so if I, I was going to cut out so that my glove was this way around it just wouldn't feel quite the same as I'm sort of putting my hand into the glove so I want to make sure that my skin is laid out so that it reflects the sort of the, the direction of the pile so that my pieces will gloves will go on nice and smoothly you also want to have a good look at your leather and look for any holes anywhere where there's sort of any imperfections because you might not necessarily want those in your gloves. There will be some areas perhaps where the skin hasn't got the fur so again you might use that for practice or for your mock-ups but you just want to have a look, have a good look at both sides, make sure that you're happy, make sure you know if there is a scar it might just be a sort of a whirl where the hair grew or it might be where the animal got caught on a fence or something like that so just check everything really thoroughly and if you're making a mock-up glove pick an area where you might sort of not want your finished glove made from so I might have a look at this area down here and say actually that just doesn't look as nice in terms of quality so I might make my mock-up and do one mock-up for the larger hand from this section and then save the nice sections for my finished glove so I'm going to now just have a little finish having a look and then I'm going to lay on my pattern pieces and draw around them. Right, so I've got my first piece laid out. I've had a look at the skin. There is a slight kind of crease just over to this side but that's going to be taken up within the cuff so I'm not too bothered about that. I should be able to get my second one when I flip the pattern over that way. Um, and I'll have a look afterwards as to where I can get the thumbs from and they may just sort of come a little bit further up that way but I sort of feel quite happy that I've got the pile going in the right direction I also know that by with the mitten I want the stretch going across the hand so by having the skin laid out I can almost sort of see that it's like a, a sort of a, a rectangle very rough rectangle in shape the short sides are the head and the tail and the long sides are where the legs would be if you imagine one at either corner so I'm making sure that I've got the short side kind of facing me the direction of the pile is in the right direction and then I've also just placed this on so that I know that the stretch is going across the hand it's not a big amount of stretch but it is enough to sort of help with getting the glove on and off so I'm going to be using a gel pen to draw on and I am keeping my nib of my pen very close to the edge of the card making sure that it's not coming in so sometimes with a, a nib like this if you happen to run it along the edge of the card and you've got a bit of a pile you can end up sinking in and you can see that because it, that's where the sort of line has been drawn so always check that your your nib is right against the edge of the card don't let it sort of sink in if it does you'll, you'll tell because your line will suddenly come out when you take your pen off and your line will look like it's kind of um, in a little bit more so take your pen off and you'll see where you need to just reposition and so I'm going to run round I'm going to get that drawn on I'll draw on the rest of this one then I'll flip it over get those drawn on and then do both thumbs before we cut out so the first one is drawn on and I've had to really keep my touch quite light so that I don't sink in. There's a slight sort of double edge here where I pressed a little bit harder and the pen slipped in which is when the, the pen is sinking into the pile so we don't want that. So I'm making sure that my touch is nice and light. I'm now going to flip this over and reposition it again 
next to or sort of in a nice area sort of away from some of the bits that were down this side of my um, leather now as long as that I can sort of I want to get as much as I can out of my leather I find it easier not to butt them up against each other should I slip when I'm cutting so I have the tiniest of gaps in between my pattern pieces I am also checking that there is a little bit of wrinkling on the skin in this corner down here but that will be taken up in the cuff so I'm not worried about that and I was happy with what I saw when I was checking earlier so I'm just going to get that drawn on and then we'll draw the thumbs before we cut out all right we are now all drawn on I was actually able to get my thumb pieces from out just on those sides there I did look at seeing if I could get slightly better economy from coming out from possibly one of the legs here but because of the texture and it's just not perhaps as good a quality leather and there's a hole so I've decided to sort of keep in keeping with the rest of the glove I'm going to just take them out of those two particular panels there so the next thing to do is to cut out now it is possible to cut your fleece with a scalpel and also with scissors and sometimes this may just come down to your own personal preference in terms of what it feels easier to cut with but I shall take you through both and show you the options our first method of cutting is going to be using the scissors and you might find that on a straight edge you prefer one method, on a curved edge you prefer another method and it's really where I would encourage you to have a little bit of a practice with your mock-up that you're going to make and see which method you prefer. If you are using scissors, I tend to have scissors that I keep just for leather and just for cutting either my gloving leathers or for cutting my sheepskin. You want, you're going to be sort of um, competing a little bit with the pile as you cut so you want to try and keep your cuts long and smooth so with your leather and with your economy of your leather don't just sort of suddenly charge through the middle of a bit that you could potentially use in another project sort of always come in from this, that sort of closest edge and we want to be keeping our blades sort of and our strokes long so we're going to just watch and keep an eye on our line so I want to be cutting either on my line or just inside my line and I'm going to keep a nice long controlled stroke don't be tempted to sort of start cutting little short strokes so you as you end up with leather that looks like it's sort of been chewed in different places by the scissors so where I have just finished I've just gone off the end there, I've just closed the blade. If you notice any bits of your line that are uneven, then now would be the time to sort of come back and sort those out. If you are using a scalpel, this is where you want to have a really nice sharp blade in your scalpel. And if at any point the blade starts to drag, then you will need to remove it and put insert another blade. So when using the scalpel, we are actually just going to be going through just the surface of the skin on its own. So we're not necessarily pressing down hard and going through the pile, but we want just enough pressure to take the blade through the skin cleanly. Um, sometimes it can help to use a ruler on a straight edge. Sometimes it can't, doesn't help. It's you know This is where you've got to just sort of have a bit of a practice, get everything lined up and see what method works for you. So I'm using a ruler to help me here and then I'm just going to pop the blade in. I'm using a hand just to grip and then, but I've gone through so I can feel that I've gone through the skin. I'm using my other hand just as a little bit of a guide to make sure that I'm not catching, nothing's moving that shouldn't be moving. I've come just inside my line. So my ruler slipped a little bit, but that's, that's not a problem. So we've used that one. So I'm now going to cut everything else out. Have a go with your both options and see which one you prefer. So in order to prevent my ruler from slipping with this next side that I'm going to cut, I've actually just popped a weight on the end and that just helps to keep everything in place. Because I'm sort of slightly short on space, I'm making sure that if I'm moving my leather, I'm also using the ruler as a little bit of a guide to make sure that the line is perfectly sort of as straight as I can get it sometimes if you move the leather it can distort the line slightly so just take a moment to make sure that you're happy that everything is in the right position before you cut it now I, I tend to find it quite difficult to cut things out if I'm kneeling on the floor so I make sure that I'm always in a sort of comfortable position so that I can cut as accurately as I can so the next thing we need to cut out is the thumb hole 
and I find it a bit easier to do this with scissors than I do a scalpel so I'm just going to use the scalpel to open up the part of the sort of side seam so I can get the blade of the scissors in and then I'm actually going to be using a slightly smaller pair of scissors to then work my way around the hole. Now sometimes people find that you could you can almost snip the middle and then work out. Um, I quite like to sort of follow the line if I can, although sometimes it is useful to sort of snip and, and create sort of flaps that you almost cut out. But what I don't want to do is to overcut if I'm creating the flaps and then end up with a slightly ragged thumb shape. So I'm just going to use my scissors to sort of on or just outside of the line and taking very careful strokes just work my way around trimming and removing the thumb hole once we've finished cutting everything out and you're happy with your edges and everything is nice and smooth we just need to remove some of the excess fur around the seams so anywhere we're, where we're going to be sewing there's a couple of exceptions on the cuff we want to sort of remove some of the bulk now what i'm not going to do is remove the bulk where the sort of cuff is sort of really really visible so i'm not sort of going to do the last sort of six centimeters of the base or the first four centimeters of the um sort of the finger end but what i am going to do is in between that almost at a 45 degree angle i'm just going to cut off some of the excess fluff and that just makes it a little bit easier to stitch the seam together now this can get really really fluffy um, so it's better to sort of do it over a bin or outside somewhere where you know you can clean up easily and we're looking just to sort of remove a little bit of a fluff between those sort of two sort of turning points around the curve of the thumb and also on the actual thumb piece itself we're not going to do the top edge because that's where the cuff is but we need to just remove the fur around the sort of the base of the thumb and up the sides of the thumb as well. So that's the oval between the turn points on the sides and then everywhere on the thumb apart from that top edge. When it comes to sewing our mitten together, we are going to start by sewing the seam that comes down the thumb, that sort of comes down our hand here. We're then going to insert the thumb into the trank and then once we've inserted the thumb into the trank the last seam we're going to do is our long side seam as we come all the way down to join the mitten together so the stitch that we're going to be using is it's a basically running stitch but in gloving terms it's known as pre-stitch sometimes you might also hear it called stab stitch which is basically sort of just going in and out um, at regular intervals with a consistent distance from the edge and a consistent gap in between your stitches. So I'm going to show you now on the sheepskin how we sort of do that and particularly how we start and how we finish because that'll be important when we come to do our gloves. The first thing that we're going to need to do before we do any sewing is to clip our edges together. As you are lining them up, just push your finger in between the two layers to flatten out their floof and we're going to clip and we're going to clip at regular intervals. Now this can be deceptive because the pile is going to be sort of pushing back against itself and it makes it look like perhaps we haven't lined things up so that they're straight. So don't be sort of fooled by the pile. Just keep an eye on it. Don't stretch anything, just allow them to come together nice and gently. And you might find with certain sections that it's, it's just a bit prudent to have a clip nearby just to sort of hold things stable particularly um, with end pieces now we're not actually going to be stitching those particular end pieces but the additional clips just add a little bit more security now when it comes to tacking our tacking is actually going to look like this it's a little bit of uh, like a series of knots that are going to hold the leather securely while we sew it together I use a piece of just an ordinary sewing thread, just a piece of, that I've waxed and I've got mine in a number seven betweens needle because that's just a bit stronger in order to cope with going through the leather and the skin. Now I'm not going to start right at the beginning where I'm going to start sewing because I want to be able to start my thread off securely so I'm going to shuffle a clip around and I'm going to start just a little bit further in. I'm going to sew within my seam allowance, so I'm looking to be somewhere in the region of four millimetres or so from the edge, three to four millimetres. And I'm going to pull the thread through, I'm going to leave a tail, 
and then I am going to just tie either a reef knot or a granny knot anything that doesn't come out just enough to hold those two pieces together now the wax will help it sort of grip and sort of stick together a little bit more um, but if you're pulling the thread and you're cutting the wet leather like a cheese wire then you'll know that you're pulling it a little bit too tightly so on the sort of straight edge I'll probably put my tacking stitches every three to four centimeters apart um, if it's on a curve I will probably put them a little bit closer together just because on a curve if you're particularly if you're easing something in you want that additional security and you don't want to end up with your excess walking its way around the piece that you're trying to put together so I might just put one more tacking stitch in here just to hold everything nice and steady and then we are good to start our sewing so to sew my fingerless mitten together I'm using a Gutterman's thread and I'm using a Gutterman's Mara which is a really nice strong thread I'm going to use a double length in the needle and I'm sewing that with the betweens number three um, which is a bit more of a beast than the number seven now traditionally the number seven is what's used when you're sort of sewing say softer leathers like the purple one I've got here um, but I found that the number seven can't cope with the thicker thread and you always have to make sure that the hole that you're making is suitable for the thread that you're pulling through it. So I'm using a number three for my main sewing, I'm using a number seven for my tacking. Um, there's no magic formula I can give you for how much thread you're going to need. Um, for the sample I'm doing I've got sort of I suppose just under a double arm's length of thread and that'll give me plenty to practice with. So I'm just going to show you now how we start and how we will sew and then finish. So I've waxed my thread and I've also got a knot in the end. Now I'm not doing loads and loads of massively big knots here. I've just gone around myself once, pulled the tail through the gap. I can trim it off because I've got a little bit of a longer tail there. And what I'm going to do before we start sewing is just to gently hammer that flat. So the camera's gonna shake a little bit. So we just want to help flatten that out and that's something we're going to be doing a lot with our sort of glove making is actually sort of using the hammer to help flatten things out. Now we're going to be doing a pre-stitch or stab stitch running stitch. I always like to start with a couple of back stitches when I'm doing my pre-stitch and I find that that just really secures the thread. So I'm not going to start right on the end, I'm coming in sort of a uh, sort of stitch width away and I'm going to come in between my two layers and I'm coming out from the inside to the outside. So I've pulled my thread out. Sometimes the little bit of fur wants to come through as you're pulling the thread through. So just pull it back and just give it a bit of a trim if you need to. Now I've gone back on myself and I'm going to pull that through. And as I've got two threads, I need to make sure that both threads are sat flat against the end of the leather. So I'm going to pull that through and then I'm going to just repeat that and do one more stitch. So I'm going to come up or try and come up in the same hole or very, very close to the same hole as that first stitch. I'm going to make sure everything is nice and tight. Check that both my threads are nice and flat. And then just go through again to secure the end. And that will be quite useful at the start and at the finish because we want to make sure that our cuff doesn't sort of spring open. Sometimes you can do say two stitches with two back stitches in as well next to each other but I find that one is, is really good and sort of usually works for me. I've just got a loose thread there so let's just pull that one through and then we're then going to keep our stitch gap and our stitch length nice and consistent we're probably about three or four millimeters from the edge and we're going to then just sort of work our way along now as i do come from the back to the front this time i'm going to just angle my needle out to create the next stitch so i've come up kind of a few millimeters away from where i sort of first came down and i'm going to just zoom in to show you that So you can just see that was my first couple of stitches and I've come up just a little bit further away and now I'm going to be working my way along keeping a nice consistent line and length and consistency from the edge. Sometimes if your thread wants to just hook up on itself it can be useful to 
just have a something to help run the thread over so you might sort of just have a finger in there and just sort of run the thread over and sort of use that to kind of help stop it from catching itself and knotting itself up and then you want to sort of pull it when obviously take your finger out and then pull it so that the threads lie nice and flat sometimes you can find that something like a Malor, which is a laying tool in gold work, but it can be quite useful just to help, you know, you can sort of almost run your thread around it to help keep your stitches nice and smooth. So we're going to just work our way along and we want to keep a consistent line and length within our stitches so that we get a really good sort of finish, but also it looks really, really neat as well. Because we're sewing with both two threads, you want to just make sure that they are both nice and flat. And then you want to keep a nice even tension. Now, you want to bring the leather so that it stays together. And if it's if you can see daylight in between your two pieces or your edges, then you know that you haven't done enough with your tension. If your work is really starting to bunch up, as in it's starting to really, really wrinkle, you'll know that you've pulled your threads too tight. When you get to a tacking stitch, you just need to whip that out nice and carefully and then carry on sewing. So we're gonna work our way along. So we've got our sort of running stitch and what you can find sometimes is that the stitch you've just done might look a little bit loose, but when you actually do the next couple of stitches, that one will settle down and sort of hold on to its tension. So I've done my final stitch and I'm just going to go back round again to secure it and sort of have two stitches in that sort of final hole. And I've just got another knot, so I'll just unleash that before we run everything through. And then we're going to we're going to look like we're going to sort of make another stitch, but we're actually going to be taking the needle to the inside in between our two layers. Now I have a rather persistent little knot there. See if I can there we go. So I've done my second stitch, gone round again. So this time I'm going to go through, but this just this sort of top layer only, and come out right in the middle of where I've been stitching. So if I just push my needle through it's like so, that's where we're going to come out. Now we need to secure our thread before we cut it off and what we want to do is to sort of, as best we can, we're going to expose the fur which is where, where most of where we stitch, it helps to sort of remove a little bit. But if you go down and you can just see there's a couple of stitches there Actually, you might not be able to. It's not um, the easiest thing to see. But I, I've just exposed the stitches that are right as I've sub separated the fur. And I'm going to just run my needle under a couple of them. Again, making sure that my threads are nice and straight. The next thing I'm going to do is to just do almost like a little buttonhole stitch under one of them to help finish the thread off. So again, I'm just exposing where they are. And this is, you know, you might just want to flatten the fur with a little bit of water. I can then pop my needle in and I can actually feel where I've either caught a stitch or I'm just on a bit of fur. So I can actually feel there that I have caught underneath a stitch. I'm going to just make a buttonhole stitch, make sure my threads are nice and straight make sure the fur, as much fur as I can possibly get is out of the way and then I'm going to pull it tight. So that's one way of finishing your thread off. Make sure that your knot is nice and tight. You can then to sort of run your needle back under a couple of stitches and pull it out. The second way I'm going to show you is where you would um, look to finish. In fact, I'll bring my needle out to the front so it, it, I've just finished that second stitch and rather than go through and underneath and sort of finish on that side, I can come out, go like I'm going to make another stitch, but this time, this is just a little bit of um, wiggling, we're going to finish our thread off from this side. So it's useful to know both because you might need to sort of use one 
over another and what I'm going to do is just expose the sort of stitches underneath so I'll pull my thread out like I've gone to make the stitch but this time I'm looking to just expose some of my previous stitches and so I can hook my needle under and you'll feel if you've hooked your needle under because you won't be able to ping it out so I'm then going to run that through I'm going to then just make another buttonhole knot pull that one nice and tight pull both of the threads to make sure that that has sort of really tightened and slipped right down to the base and then I'm just going to run my needle under another couple of stitches before I finish the thread off. It can almost feel like you're weaving through the back of the leather, like you might weave through the back of the fabric if you were sort of doing something with, with fabric. So I'm going to pull that through, pull that nice and tight and I can feel that sit into position. Now you wouldn't use both, you'd have one or the other. Pull the thread, cut it off at the base and then we're going to just flatten the seam. So with my hammer I'm just going to very gently flatten the seam and smooth out the stitches and hopefully not knock anything over. So I can just flatten that out and that just helps to settle everything down. So that is the basic stitch that we're going to be using. So the first thing that we're going to do is to sew the seam that comes down the side of the thumb and we're going to get that pinned and tacked ready so it's just this little curved seam here and I've put some extra sort of clips on just to hold the top and base nice and secure but I'm actually just going to use a couple of st stitches like I've kind of modeled here so I've got my thread ready to go and I'm not going to do the sort of the very top but I will come down a little bit just to put my first stitch in so I'm using that betweens number seven and some just ordinary sewing thread so I'm going to put my first stitch in and then I'm going to just repeat that to pop my second stitch in. So on both of my thumb pieces I'm starting at the top by the straight edge and I'm going to be sewing all the way down to the end of that curve on what is then point A. So I'm starting on the inside just like we did when we did our practice section and I'm going to start off with just a double stitch to hold everything together. Now I've knotted the end of my thread, I've hammered that knot flat and I can just sometimes when the thread pulls itself through with a bit of fur we can just pull that back a little bit Sometimes that encourages the thread to go back through. If it doesn't, then we will just give it a bit of a trim because that's quite a lot of thread I've just pulled through there. So we'll just trim that off. Just release it out a little bit more. As it turns out, I did have a bit of a cannonball of fur there. So I've taken the thread out. I've cut and sort of liberated the knot and got rid of that sort of fur ball. And now I'm ready to carry on sewing. So I've just completed my second stitch. As I come back from the back to the front, I'm going to bring my needle through at a slight angle so I can sort of get a good sort of gap for my running stitch. So I'm just looking now to work my way along, check that my threads aren't knotting. Sometimes if you've done a few stitches, you might just need to sort of straighten your thread out so that I find that when I stitch, I obviously have a slight twist on my needle and I end up with sort of a twisted thread. Just take a moment to unfurl that and make sure it's nice and straight as you work your way along. So the stitches are going to be kind of quite crucial so just take your time. It's always a good idea to do a little bit of a practice sample like we sort of demonstrated when I showed you the stitching purely because it helps to get your eye in so that you're not um, sort of starting from a sort of a cold place that you're actually warmed up and you've had a bit of a chance to have a look at everything. So I'm gripping the with my other hand and I'm just pulling those stitches out of the way and I'm just checking where my needle's going in, where my needle's coming out and I can always reposition if I need to. Um, sheepskin and there are certain types of leather that are a bit more forgiving um, so if you do happen to poke in the wrong place and sometimes it may happen 
that you have a stitch that comes down at an angle or you suddenly you look at a row and there's a stitch that's a bit, a bit lower so you can if you're very very careful um, tease them out and sort of reposition them but don't try and sort of do anything that's going to create a really big hole in the leather so you might find that if you can't easily feed it back through that you've then got to cut your thread and I would cut the thread quite close to the eye of the needle so that you can then maximise anything that you've got left to sew with. So we're nearly at the halfway point. Um, it's quite useful just to keep an eye on the back as well as the front because you want to make sure that everything is lying flat. I speak from experience when things kind of curl up. If my, I notice that my leather is starting to concertina together, I know that I've pulled my thread too tight so I just want to keep an eye on that and then I will work my way down to the base which is point A which is where I'm going to stop. So I just got to the end of my first row and I should have taken these out as I was going along but you can just very carefully break your tacking stitches when you get to them and just pull them out so they're not sort of then stuck in the work. Um, I think I was more focused on getting to the end because I was a bit flustered about the start but that feels much better now I've got rid of the fur and I can see that I've got some really nice even stitching there. I haven't gone through this one twice because we'll do that when we attach it to the trank which is the next step. Now if you find that um, you just want to put in part point A and B again then just line up the pattern piece with the trank and I've just made a, a dot just on the very sort of edge so I know where A and where B are and also on the one that I've just done I know that my point B is right at the tip of the fold so I might just if I didn't transfer it already I can just pop that in so that I've got a little mark there. Now that little mark that I've done is going to correspond with the mark at my point B and the bit that we have just done and where we've stopped is actually our point A. So the next thing to do is to get those two points attached. Now this is going to involve a little bit of wriggling, but I want to clip as close together as I can. And then I'm also going to clip B, so I'm almost sort of folding one against the other so that I can then line them up. Now before I put any more clips in, I'm just going to have a quick visual check to make sure that I'm happy with the position and the sort of the amount of excess and actually it looks fairly even. So now what we're looking to do is to distribute the rest of the excess around the circle so that they sit together really nicely. So I'm going to, I'm not going to sort of do all of one side in one go, I'm going to sort of mark the halfway point, make sure that I'm sort of almost distributing this by eye because we're it's such a it's a smaller area but we don't want to end up with everything at one end or bunched together so I'm just sort of pulling it round the pile is going to want to sort of push away but try and sort of ignore that and make sure that you're happy with the distribution and then I'm going to come back and go in between each of those markers now to pop in my next clip and this is one of those examples where you're going to um, probably use a few more tacking stitches than you would normally because we want to trap the excess at each marker point so that when we sew it it sort of stays in position and it doesn't walk its way around your trank. So I'm just going to put my last clip in there and when I come back and tack it I'll make sure that everything is sort of pushed down and sort of the fur, as much fur as I can get is sort of tucked inside. So there we go, so we are clipped in. We're now gonna grab our tacking threads and we're gonna tack that together. I start tacking with points A and B first and then I'll work my way around. So I'll do A and B, then I'll do the halfway points on each side and then I'll do the last four um, that were sort of fitting in between. So we're now ready to start our stitching and what I'm going to do is just sort of carry on 
in the pattern of the sort of stab stitch that we've been doing or the pre-stitch that we've been doing but when I come to the sort of the very end I'm going to sort of just add in a, a couple of extra stitches for a little bit of security. Now I find it quite useful to sort of work things to sort of together so that I'm doing the same thing on the same part of the same glove I just find that a bit easier if you find it easier to do the whole of one and then do the next one then by all means do that um, but I like to sort of just keep an eye on things and make sure that both are progressing nicely so I'm going to start my stab stitch again and I've got everything nice and tacked so that will be nice and secure I'm going to just make sure that the excess in the fur is all pushed to the inside and that I've clamped everything quite firmly with my left hand whilst I sew with the right so there might be a little bit of a gap here at the moment that's a temporary gap because when we come back we will sort of make sure we've secured everything so there aren't any holes or any weak spots so we're going to start off with our stab stitching and we're going to keep within that same pattern that we've had um, for starting that thumb seam for continuing that thumb seam so we're going to just make sure all, all the way around that our stitches are again watching our stitch length and the gap between our stitches make sure they're nice and consistent and make sure that our threads of course sit nice and flat whilst we're sewing so away we go so I've just worked my way around and I have stitched all the way back up to the top if when you were sewing you realized that your thread um, probably wasn't going to come all the way around I would advise starting another one at the top here with this couple of stitches I'm about to show you and then bringing it down to meet so that they overlap where the other one is about to kind of finish off if you've got all the way around brilliant um, what we're now going to do is to sort of do our finishing stitches so to make sure I haven't got any holes I've got my last stitch that I've just poked the needle through to start to make and I'm making sure that I'm coming out in the same holes as my first stitch when I started to join the thumb piece to the trank so I'm going to just for a couple of stitches follow along those same holes so I've pulled everything nice and tight and I'm going to do um, again using those same holes so they kind of those stitches will sit one on top of the other I'm going to just do I'll probably do two more because then that'll be three stitches I've overlapped in total and again making sure that I'm pulling my excess through and that both my threads are sitting flat so again just pull that through make sure they're nice and flat and I'm going to go through one more so I'll do that one um, you'll notice as you start to stitch where you've got the bit of the pile the stitches will sort of sink in a little bit as well which is quite a nice sort of effect so once you've overlapped your stitches by a few stitches you can sort of see there's no gap there now you have the option of taking the needle through and finishing it on the inside exposing the stitches to sort of wiggle under from that way I'm going to do mine from the top so that means I'm going to be going through my top layer sharing that hole but coming out in between the two layers to finish my thread off so both options are good and you, so it's useful to know both in case you find yourself in a situation where you perhaps need to take the thread to the inside now I've already got some extra threads up there so I want to try and expose the threads just down here a little bit more so I'm going to wiggle my needle in just and under a, a few stitches and I can feel it because if I try and lift my needle up there's nothing sort of coming out so I know that if, if my needle wasn't caught it would actually just pop out so I've gone underneath and I just want to pull these early threads now sort of flat and then I will do my finishing stitches so that one and then that one make sure they're nice and straight and then if I can I'm going to expose um, one of my stab stitches if not I will that's it I've gone under one of my threads there that's good so I'm going to now do my buttonhole pull that nice and tight and I'm going to pull both ends separately to make sure that they're nice and tight and then I'm going to just wiggle the knot and wiggle my finishing thread 
through the stitches and you'll feel it you don't want to see it on either side but you'll feel it because it will really sort of bite in to a bit to the leather and a bit to the stitches so we'll pull those nice and tight there we go and then I can snip off my thread so I pulled it tight I'm going to snip the thread off so that as the thread releases everything will sort of sink back in now I can then just gently hammer my way around so my starting stitches will be finished my knots will be finished and if you notice you've got a slight sort of tuft just at the base here we can just sink the scissors in and just really carefully just cut those little tufty bits off when we've finished the rest of the stitching of course we can go along and we can sort of trim off any other bits of fur as we go the next thing to do now is we're going to clip and tack together this long outer seam so I'm going to just put a clip in at the top make sure that's nice and level and pop a clip in and I'm going to just pop one at right angles as well to hold it steady and then I'm going to work my way down the seam so again I'm going to clip the bottom as well because I don't want to run out of leather before I get there so I'll pop a clip in there and I'm just going to clip one at right angles to help keep the base nice and stable there we go so now I'm just going to make sure I push my fur in and I don't want to sort of pull one against the other I want them to sort of sit quite nicely I'm going to push the fur in and I'm just going to pop the clips in now I'm going to pop one in the middle just to start me off but I might have to move that if it if the leather is not sitting correctly so I just want to work my way along making sure that everything is nice and level if when you're putting this together you notice that your leather is starting to drag um, and it's looking like it's being pulled one way then you know that something's gone wrong so you need to take out clips and reposition everything so you don't want any drag marks on your leather because that means that something has gone wrong equally when you're sewing if you realize that you've got drag marks within your tacking and that you're because you want your tacking when you're sewing any of your panels to sit at right angles across the seam and if you notice when you're sewing that it's starting to sit diagonally you'll know then that you've dragged your thread the wrong way and it's something has got caught so always take a moment to sort of get the basics and the foundations in because it makes the rest a lot easier so that one is now ready for tacking and again I'll probably put them every three to four centimeters maybe even in between each of the clips just to stop the anything from dragging and moving along I'm quite happy with how that's looking because there's nothing obviously being pulled from one side to another so let's get that one tacked so our last side is now tacked and ready for sewing I've got my knot in the end I've hammered it flat so I've got my knot in the end of my thread I'm then going to come through and I'm going to do my first of my um, two stitches now when I had a bit of a knot with my um, thumb piece earlier I should have mentioned as well that you can just pull the threads from the back pull the fur out with the eye of the needle and just keep keep an eye on it and make sure that nothing is sort of coming through that you don't want to come through um, I'm sorry I didn't actually think of the uh, using the eye of the needle earlier but if you do get a big wadge of thread coming through just tease it out and get it out of the way so I'm going to now I've started at the base but you can start at either end it's absolutely fine I've just kept the clip in to m remind me to make sure that everything stays nice and level I've pushed my knot into the middle and I'm going to well between my two layers and I'm going to now do my very first stitch and I'm going to do that twice so I'm going to go through to the other side make sure I'm happy with that yeah nice and level make sure my threads come through and they're nice and level it can be very tempting in a lot of leather work to when you're pulling your thread out to just keep pulling the needle and but you'll find that you'll just if you keep doing that you will wear the thread out quite quickly around the eye of the needle so as you're pulling your thread through always try and just grab it um, near where you near the where it's sort of what you're sewing rather than right the way up the other end so I'm going to repeat that now do my second stitch and I'm going to just try and use the same holes or come up nice and close check both of them are nice and level which they are nice and good 
and then I'm now going to go back through for the last time one there coming out make sure that sits nice and flat get rid of that clip now so now I'm going to angle my needle and just come out to start my running stitch and as you can see the fur is pretty keen to attach itself so we're going to be on with our sewing just like we've done before keep an eye on your stitch length and the gap and make sure that you're not creeping so that you get close to your edge you want to always keep that nice and consistent because you don't want to burst out of the glove as soon as you put it on so always always keep an eye on that and we're now basically stitching from this end to this end finishing with an extra stitch up here and then you've got two options as to how you finish your thread off so we have our first mitten all finished and we just want to make sure that we're going to gently hammer the seams now if you've got a sort of a surface that is a little bit bouncy you may wish to find something that's a bit more solid if you've got um some sort of made well with your leather i'd always perhaps advise using a little barrier so that you're hammering through something to just to protect that your leather that you've got there so work your way gently along your seams and if you can around the seams that we stitched around the thumb as well we're then going to turn up the cuffs and then again this is going to be turning it to the the point that you have set your preferred cuff uh, distance to be and you can always adjust this when you've got the glove on um, and then we are going to pop the glove on the hand so if at any point you find that you've got a cheeky little tail from your starting or finishing stitches poking up then just clear the fur out of the way pull the tail as hard as you can whilst pushing down with the scissors to just snip off those threads there we go now it might find that it's it helps just to run your the eye of your needle over the seam particularly where the cuff is turned to then just release any fur that might be trapped and that'll also help to disguise any cheeky finishing or starting stitches that are showing up so i'm just going to go to the inside of the glove as well as the outside just a little bit there just to brush the needle across and along the seam just to release anything it's a bit like if you make um, children's toys using fake fur that you just want to release anything at the very end to just help finish the effect off and there we have it so that is our left hand all done oh it's nice and snug and then I can just adjust the turn and the sort of the feel of it and it's lovely look at that I'm really pleased with that I hope you're really pleased with yours and then again if you need to one final finishing thing as I've just noticed I've got a few bits of fur poking out between the uh, seams here so I can just whip off the glove and I can give those a really quick clear, a trim off with my scissors just to level everything up so before I finish the other one we'll have a final check make sure everything is nice and clipped every all the seams are nice and fresh and we're almost there so all that remains now is to finish off the other mitten and then you will have both ready for winter this is always my favorite bit after any making is the sort of trying on and sort of checking and sort of testing for fit so i've finished the seams off i've trimmed away any excess fur i've also just um, checked my sort of starting and finishing threads and given everything a little bit of a hammer to help it flatten out and these feel really cozy i have to say um they're quite snug there's so quite a snug fit which is quite nice so I don't feel like they're going to fall off at any particular time but I'm really pleased at how they've turned out I also have the option if I wanted to sort of fold up the cuff I can always sort of extend that and take it down the other way as well if I so wish if I wanted to sort of make the cuff a little bit more permanent I could just hem that and hem it down hem it around and I do sort of mention that in one of my mittens um, my full mittens tutorial so you could always um, hem them but if you've got to this stage well done try them on if you can always do try 
and make a mock-up to check for fit. It's really important because you don't want to waste your best leather. Um, so if you've got anything that's spare or if you can use, as I mentioned in my tutorial, a bit of the leather that isn't quite as nice and then you keep the best leather for your best kind of gloves. Um, but it is really worth doing just to check for fit, to make sure your pattern's okay, make any adjustments and then away you go. So congratulations on completing your fingerless mittens. Wear them with pride and enjoy them and you know, maybe even um, wear them when you're stitching in front of the telly on these cold winter evenings. So well done everyone.